if you were here over the last two weeks, we've been talking about the area of fasting. We started by looking at uh, Daniel and how Daniel prayed and the reason he was praying was after he read the scriptures and saw what was decreed. Uh, Daniel decides to go on a fast. He, he prayed. We noted a number of things. Number one, we noted that prayer and petitions were, were happening within this arena called fasting. And it, it happened in, the, in Daniel together with uh, sackcloth and ashes. That was the arena or the context within which his prayer was happening. And then secondly, we noted that, and this is a statement we, we made, we want to repeat this statement uh, for us, that in biblical times, the people of God prayed and fasted during those times that they had challenges and during times when there were uncertainties in their lives. Please note that that when they faced challenges, they went to prayer and fasting. We also noted that there are several types of fasting. We noted that uh, there is the Daniel fast, and, and these are not limited to just the three that we are mentioning. We're simply showing you that there are several types of fast. Then there is the Esther fast, and we will look into these in a moment. There is also what we call a partial fast. Both the Daniel fast and Esther fast are intense, but a partial fast, that's when you, you will eat one meal in a day, or you will take a shorter time. But these are all uh, fasts that have been practiced in, in the past. The Daniel fast was where he did not eat meat or heavy meals where there was bread and sweets but only drank water and maybe he took juices, uh, fruits and vegetables. We know that in the very beginning Daniel had said to the uh, eunuch who was watching over them that they should only be given vegetables. And later we see in chapter 10 that Daniel said, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. And we talk about the length of time. But for him it was three weeks. He ate no pleasant food, no meat, no wine came into his mouth. He says, I did not anoint myself at all till these three weeks were fulfilled. But the Esther fast is a three days fast. We want to look into that in chapter 4 of Esther and verse 6. These are the words that Esther spoke to Mordecai, who was his cousin, the Bible tells us. He says, she said to Mordecai, go and gather all the Jews who are found in Shushan and fast over me and do not eat and do not drink three days, night and day. And I and my maidens will also fast the same way. Intense, very intense, three days, three Nights, no food for three consecutive days. Three days. Tell your neighbor for me, three days. And you know, in the Bible, numbers are very significant. And we will not teach you about numbers now. But just remember that numbers are very significant. That when you come to these numbers, you need to hear them. You need to hear the numbers. Three days Jesus was in the grave. 
On the third day, he rose again. Jonah, who was trying to run away, he was swallowed by the whale, by the big fish, and uh, three days and three nights. He was in the belly of the fish. Three days, they seem to be uh, significant. Esther says, when this is done, then I will go to the king. And even though it is against the law, if I perish, I perish. And that's a, that's a significant statement. If I perish, I perish. But we also made a statement, and I want to remind you that statement because we want to carry us with this statement as we go in these series. And as we come to the month of February, we actualize fasting. I want you to note that both Esther, and not just Esther and Daniel, all those others who were involved significantly in fasting, they realized phenomenal breakthrough in their lives. God came through for them. And my desire is that during these times of learning, as we go through, that you will also arrive at the place where God will come through for you. That God will come through for us as a congregation, as a people of God. And I want just to add another statement. What does it mean coming through? It means that God comes into your situation and he turns the situations around to bring the better that is required. Maybe it is a situation as we know situations. Or maybe it is a person as we know persons. Or maybe it is you as a person. That when God comes through, then things change. Your life will be changed. Your situation will be changed. So let's look at the situation as it was here in the days of Esther and Mordecai. So we look at the Esther fast. I have divided this into scenes. And there are about uh, seven scenes all together that I have put together. There are a couple of other scenes, but let's look at scene one. And in scene one, um, by the way, how many of you were here last Sunday? Let me just see by show of hands. You were here. You were here last Sunday. Just, just high up. You were here last Sunday. You were not here last Sunday. Let me see by, by show of hands. It's almost equal. What surprises me every Sunday I ask this is there's a whole lot of people who are here and there's a whole lot of people that were not here. Now, are you ever here all together? Can I ask that? <laughs> okay. Now, if you were here last Sunday, we gave you some homework. What was the homework? To read what? The book of Esther. So, I, I, I am just going to assume you read the book of Esther. And so, the people who were not here then should be sitting next to you. So that you'll be, you'll be walking with them and telling them now the next thing is... Uh, have you ever gone to a movie with a guy who has watched the movie? And <laughs> okay, so that's, that's, that's the way we're going to do it now. So I'm assuming that you've read uh, because it, it, it is such, it's a narrative. Uh, simply a story being, being, being told. So we will avoid uh, going to read that entire story. So scene one, Queen Vashti is rejected and we see that in Esther chapter 1 and verse 19. The reason she is rejected is um, Xerxes the king had a party, banquet, a huge banquet and out of 127 provinces he had called the generals, the chiefs, 
all these officials for this party while they were in the middle of enjoyment and they were just a little bit tipsy the king says call the queen so she can do us a dance now Vashti um, I don't know whether she will be in heaven uh, she was a Gentile uh, but because there will be people in heaven who knew Vashti like I know Esther will be in heaven I will want to sit with a notebook to ask what kind of a woman she was because she said me go and dance kwaawa walevi siendi and that became it and she did not show up and of course the king was told uh vasti amezusha for those who know that swahili amezusha a dance and maybe it would have been added na ameuliza na utadu so she didn't come and the king decides that she would be di- disposed in fact that letter that decree that was written and the officials it it's actually uh an interesting look at verse 21 the reply pleased the king and the princes and the king did according to the word of memukan then he sent letters to all the king's provinces to each province in its own script and to every people in their own language that each man should be master in his own house and speak in the language of his own people because of vashti scene 2 the officials come to the king and they said now when you have healed this is what we want to do we want to parade before you all these beautiful virgins and then you choose one I don't know the number it is not given for us in the scriptures but um finally there was Esther so we see in chapter 2 in our scene 2 there is a search for the queen to replace Vashti look at chapter 2 and verse 5 through to 7 in Shushan the citadel there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai the son of Jael the son of Shimel the son of Kish a Benjamin Benjamite Kish had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured with Jeconiah king of Judah whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away and Mordecai had brought up hadassa that is esther his uncle's daughter for she had neither father nor mother the young woman was lovely and beautiful when her father and mother died mordecai took her as his own daughter and it is from here that we are now introduced to Esther and Mordecai gives instructions elaborate instructions and finally Esther is queen chapter 2 and verse 17 and 18 if you have your bible with you the king loved Esther more than all the other women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so he set the royal crown upon his head upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti then the king made a great feast the feast of esther for all his officials and servants and he 
proclaimed a holiday in the provinces and gave gifts according to the generosity of a king. So Queen Esther is enthroned. Scene 3. These are the initial days of Esther in the palace. And we see that she was of excellent behavior. She was well disciplined because the Bible said that Mordecai brought her up in that way. In verse 19 of uh, that chapter 2, when virgins were gathered together a second time, Mordecai sat within the king's gate. Now Esther had not revealed her family and her people just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the command of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him. Now I wish that we can say that about all the people we bring up, all our children. But she was obedient and she followed and she did not reveal that she was a Jew. She did not answer the questions that were not asked. Hello? She did not answer the questions that were not asked. There is a time to be quiet and there is a time to speak. Tell your neighbor, there is a time to be quiet. Now, that is a more important time than the time to speak. That time to be quiet. When, when, you, when you don't know what to say or when you know that you shouldn't say, you just be quiet. There's a little song I used to sing in, in, the, in, in the camp when, when I used to attend camp at the Word of Life. It's a beautiful little song. I can't remember all the things, but it, it, it used to go something like this. Um, would you like me to sing? Why don't you sing something for me before I sing something? No. Okay. It used to say, gossip, gossip, evil thing. Da, 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 da. If you can say something nice, don't talk at all. That's my advice. If you can't say something nice, zip up your mouth. But this was not the case. It was not about saying something nice. It was about divulging information that was not asked for. So she kept quiet and the king that's an interesting king also. He sees this beautiful woman. He likes her. And he doesn't even ask, who is your father? Or who is your mother? Which hill do you come from? He simply loves this woman, makes her queen. And lo and behold, she is actually, by all descriptions, a slave. But he didn't ask. But Esther kept quiet. Tell your neighbor for me, continue being quiet. It will pay. Amen. So we see this is her initial day. She, she did not say who she was. Let's go to scene four. And scene four, something else now happens. We, we leave uh, Esther and we come now to a gentleman called Haman. We are introduced to Haman. Let me just encourage you when you are looking for a name to name your child. Let me say that uh, in your vocabulary, never. You can call your daughter, like my brother has a daughter called Hadassah, which means Esther. You can call your son Mordecai, but please, Avoid Haman. Don't call your son Haman. I know my friends, the Luos, you know, you, you hear people called M. Pesa you, in, in Kisumu, you know, please don't call your Pastor Luke. Don't ad advise your people, particularly your people. They should not call their sons Haman. 
This is a bad guy. This Haman guy. So we are introduced to him. And what happens is that in chapter 3, read with me chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. After these things, King Ahasuerus is the same guy as Xerxes. He promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agakite. These, these were the Gentiles. These were the Hittite people that, that uh, uh, occupied, if you remember, the Ninevites. These, these are guys that are related to these guys. And he advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Now, of course, we, we do not know exactly why we can only deduce from uh, the fact that Mordecai was a Jew and, and bowing is an act of worship and he, he chose to give his respect in other ways but not in bowing but that didn't go very well with Haman so Haman decided that um, he would do something in fact in this passage if you continue to read it says he was so angry but he restrained himself he, he could have shown some tantrums he could have thrown some works he could have flexed his muscles but he withheld himself he had an opportunity that he planned for so he schemed that one day he would hang Mordecai but why hang Mordecai by himself he decided he would not only hang Mordecai but he would hang Mordecai and all the Jews and in that process he went to the king at an appointed time he explained to the king that in this kingdom all throughout the provinces there are some bad guys these guys are bad and they are schemers and wanazana kama rabbits and before you know it there will be more than us and they will take over your kingdom so I suggest to you, king, that on this particular date, you sign that they be killed. He accomplishes that. That is signed and taken to all the provinces. Scene five. We now come to the fast. In chapter four and verse one to three. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. It was bad news for the Jews who were in exile. We call this the exilic period. They were in exile, and not only were they in exile, it now adds, uh, what do they say, insult to injury or injury to insult. Uh, one of those. But it doesn't matter the way you, you, you say it. Both are bad. Insult and injury are equally bad. So one of those was added to, 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 to the situation. In chapter 4, Mordecai, uh, through a servant who was assisting Esther, explained this whole thing and Esther gets to know what was happening. But she had one fear in chapter 4 and verse 10. And she says to her servant to tell Mordecai, Esther spoke to Hathak 
and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. But then she says, yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai these words. Mordecai responds and says, you know what? I understand all those, but we are at stake. So what you will do, if you refuse to take your responsibility, God will bring, didn't say God, but says help will come from some place for the Jews. But be careful, you may not survive, you and your household. And so finally Esther agrees and she goes to the king after the fast. And so let's look at after the fast. I want you to know that during this time, during this time, there were things that happened that before we enter into scene six, there were things that happened that we did not make reference to, but we will make reference to as we move on. So, scene six. She goes to the king and she's granted favor. After the three days of fast, that we have already made reference to. Then the king says, okay, here we are, Esther. And, uh, and of course, I, I don't know whether they avoided to write everything, but, but I think the king remembers, oh, you know, there were so many virgins, but I chose you. So, uh, I can give you anything. If you want half the kingdom, I can give it to you. So, what is it that you want? And she says, well, I desire that I throw a bash for the king. And bring Haman with you. And the king says, Kukula too. So he sends word to Haman and says the queen is inviting us for a bash. I want you to remind you, I want to remind you that a few days before Haman had been promoted. Tell your neighbor promoted. Haman had just been promoted. And things in his mind, things are going well with Haman. I was promoted, and not only promoted, exclusive banquet, I and the king, and Esther, to a banquet. Kwani. Things were going good for Haman. Little did he know. Let me leave that statement just as it is. So, the king invited Haman during the banquet. In verse 7 and 8, you can read that. During the banquet, as they were just chatting, the king asked Esther, Now, what is it that you want? Because you don't throw a bash for nothing. And um, Esther, full of wisdom, he said, if the king is pleased with this queen, I ask a favor. You come again tomorrow for another banquet. I have plenty to offer. And maybe she said, and tomorrow's meal, it will be a different arrangement. 
And the king looks at Haman. Says Haman, you need plan yama. And Haman says, Your Excellency, you need plan to kujekesho. Between that evening and the following evening, dust is raised. And God, in his providence, works things that cooks Haman and cooks him until he was just about like this. Kupakuliwa tu na kuwekwa kwa sahani. Because Ali Eva. Mwambie mwenzako Haman akaiva. And I want to I want you to know something. I just want to interject here. Like I said in the early service. This is what God does when you go before him in a fast. Esther and Mordecai, of course they were subjects. They did not have around them or within them power or authority. They had no means that they would go and use. Like my pastor would say, how could you awatu? You know, you should know people. You know that? They didn't know people. These people are in exile. They know no one. But you know, some of us who know people, and some of us who have authority, we do it just the opposite and we spill the beans. I'll never forget a situation where my wife and I are visiting a couple many, many years ago and they are no longer on this planet Earth. And uh, we're sitting in their home and, and the man and the wife are having a discussion and I don't know what exactly happened because it's a long time ago but I remember one thing. You, you know, there are those things you don't forget. But unfortunately, they are not the good things. It's when the wife turns to the man and he tells him, I'll thumb you. You know what thumbing means? I'll put this thumb somewhere. Either in your eye or I'll thumb you anyway. <laughs> or some other women who think they are very spiritual. You've spilled the beans. God doesn't work that way. And Esther knew that. Because going to Haman and making noise, was it going to make any difference? He's a man of power. He's in authority. He's got all these powers and machinery and everything. He was serving the king. He was elevated. It wasn't going to work. But who created Haman? God. Go to God. So Esther fasts. And that night, stuff happened. Have you ever heard that word? It's, it's, it's an American expression. When they say stuff, that, that is... When they say stuff happened, that means things happened. Too many to go one by one. Just tell your neighbor for me, for the sake of what happened, stuff happened. And just a couple of things. You know, the king went to bed. The king went to bed. And the whole night he was turning, tossing, and no sleep. So by early morning, and we don't know what time it was, we imagine it was about 3.30 going to 4. He, he called. He called. And, and I realized that kings, when they call, they, they don't usually call your name. I, I, I'll never forget one day with the late Bishop Berech, we went to visit His Excellency in his home here in, in uh, Cabernet Gardens. And uh, I didn't see anybody else. We were just sitting there with the church leaders and so on. And then after they they told His Excellency what the matters were and how they, 
who wanted to see him and all these things and everything. Then he gave his speech and he said, I have heard and we will look into these matters. Thank you very much. And then everybody stood and said, well, thank you, sir. We are now going to, to go. He said, no, 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 you, you just sit. We are going to have something to bite. And then we all sat down. I saw him just look around. He said, hey! And people came from the grass. <laughs> I, I was so surprised. People came from the grass from all directions. And then about three or four came to him. He said, let's have a say, Chakula. <laughs> so when the king is calling, he may not be calling your name, but you just be around. Just in case your name is included. So he calls one of these guys and said, give me some books to read. And he read the books, he read the books, and read the books. Then he comes through an interesting scenario. One day, there was a man sitting at the gate, and he had two security officials discussing how they were going to kill the king. It was reported to Esther. Esther reported to the king. It was investigated. It was found to be true. That actually, these two people wanted to kill the king. They were apprehended and they were hanged. And there was a full stop. The man who had them, guess who he was. His name was Mordecai. The king is reading this and he says, this is a good guy. He hears all this. So whoever was called, he said, okay, uh, come back here. Who, who is around? Now, when you are before the king and the king is asking who is around, you know you are not around. <laughs> you, you don't say I am because he's asking who is around. So Haman who previously had been promoted, who had been invited for dinner once and this day that Tunamukia, he is coming for the second banquet, he is there very early to report on duty. The king calls him in and he says, Haman, I have a question for you. If a man has pleased the king, what do you think we should do for him? He poses Kidogo, the other day I was promoted. I came for dinner. I am coming for another dinner. Guess who is pleasing the king? Haman. So he says, your excellency, sir, you live forever. That's what they used to say in those days. King, you live forever. Nobody ever lived forever, even though they've been told to live forever. But uh, that was the way they were addressed. He said, now, if a man has pleased the king, these are the following things that I want you to do for this guy take the gown the kingly gown take the king's signet ring and take the horse that the king rides put this man on that horse then get somebody who is really respected in your kingdom and he's thinking I got some juniors here and one of them then take this guy round town. If it was today, he would have said, you know, put him in the kingly garment and whatever else in the days of Nyayo, that would have been more practical. Fimbo ya Nyayo, you know. Fimbo ya Nyayo. Apeleke hiyo akionyesha huku. And then you will be saying, you see this guy here? He has pleased the king. King Zaxi says to Haman, thank you. I like your ideas. Actually, there is a guy who has pleased me and uh, don't change anything. Those are the words of scripture. Don't change anything. Everything you've told me, do them exactly like you have said to Mordecai. Take Mordecai, dress him, put my signet ring on him, take my horse, if it was today, he says, take my limo. You know that limousine where the president comes out in the middle? 
And then akitokea kichwa huko useme unaona huyu jamaa the king is very happy with him so take him round the city and do exactly that was haman being cooked or not now listen this is this is long but we're coming to a close This is now the night after this banquet. So that's where we are. After Haman brings Mordecai back and he returns the instruments of power. He goes home and his wife says to him, "My husband, things are bad." Nikuba Nikubaya. So I give you advice. What is my advice? Recant your plan. Change your plan. Because if this is Mordecai, and now you see we have put gallows where you are to hang him. My advice is take those gallows down. Hello? I don't know what they are called in Swahili so vitu ya kunyongea watu so the easier way is to call them vinyongi. Iso vinyongi. Put them down. Utumane vinyongi viondolewe. But unfortunately as they were talking the officials for the from the king came and they said uh, Haman the king says it's banquet time. So they go to the banquet long face the heart beating they eat I'm not sure how much he ate but he did nibble something Then the king says to Esther You know at this time the spirit of the king is high because twice twice the queen has thrown a bash so he is very high and this morning he honored some guy he doesn't even know who he is but he just honored him because he is a good guy so the king is in high spirits so he says queen esther what can i do for you and esther who was watching all these events he says i just want my life The king turns and says, "Your life. Don't you remember you are the queen that I chose from all those other virgins from everywhere? Who in this world would be thinking about taking your life?" And Queen Esther, because Haman or Ameva says, "None other but Haman." That. You are eating this banquet with. Now, the king's anger is indescribable. We don't know how deep it was because he stood up with fury, and before he could say anything, he decided to walk out to the flowers to to see just what was going on in his heart and mind. And meanwhile, Haman goes and. Falls at the feet of the queen to plead to say, please tell, tell the king whatever he was going to tell. Tell the king why he is there. The king walks back. How many of you know that in that kind of a situation, everybody is standing at ease? The cooks are looking through. Everybody is opening the door slowly. How many of you know that is a tense moment? Everybody is listening. So when the king comes back, he says to Haman, "Haman, kumbwa ni mbaya hivi. I mean, ni metoka tu inje kidogo. 
what are you doing with the queen here in the sitting room? When Mutumbaya, I think it was the chief chef who came and said, Your Excellency, ata ukiangalia, apa utaona vinyongi. Na hizo vinyongi, huyu Haman, alikuwa ametengenezea Mordecai. And the king says, which Mordecai? The good guy. The one who had people want to nyonga mimi. And he reported. And Haman wants to nyonga him. Simupeleke Haman kwa hiyo kinyongi. Na anyongwe before I do something else. And before you know it, you know how that happens? I, I don't know in your language how they say this. But in my language there is one word that means everything. If there was hoy 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 and before you know it he is hanging there scene 5 is over they come back and the king says to the queen you know that the law of the medes and the persians does not change and unfortunately it is written that your people will be killed. The only way we can help your people, my queen, is to write another decree. Because in those days, when the day was going to come, they were going to be slaughtered like sheep. But now we can write another decree. That on that day, wajitete. Now from the same king, he says, wawawe, before too long, a letter is coming with speed. The king said, those people, wajitete. That day came and passed. Because one, if the king says, wajitete, how are you sure that the same king has not supplied them with pangas and rungus na mishale? Nobody touched the Jews. And that is why the nation of Israel is alive today. We bring it to a close. The fast of Esther. I don't know which Haman is in your life. Mwambie ndugu yako tu muulize tu kuna Haman kwako. Muulize tu kuna Haman. Usimuandikie barua. Usimuandikie barua. Uyo msichana ambaye unamsuku anatembea na bwana yako wacha kumuandikia text unaharibu tu maneno hello wacha kumupigia simu hata siku ile tutakutana and you don't know whether she is hefty or whether she has done karate and taekwondo please wachana na hiyo hello hello Wacha kwenda kwa ofisi ya huyo bwana. Hello? Na kuzusha kwa ofisi. Enda kwa bwana wa mabwana. Amen. And declare a fast. Declare a fast. My, my wife was working at OP. I can mention that. It's OP. And then there was this boss who would not give her work. And you know those of you who know Janet, and unfortunately she's not here, she's unwell. Uh, those of you who know Janet, she's a hard worker. And those of you who worked with her in the civil service, she's a hard worker. So she was telling me now, Sasa tutafanya nini? I don't want to sit there and do nothing, and I don't want to go there and do my work. And I told her what? So I said, let's go to that office. So we went to the office, and I carried my anointing oil, OP. We anointed her office and I told her, now you keep this bottle, and when the boss is out, you also go and anoint the office. And that's what we did. I don't know how long it was. I, it's a long time ago. I don't know how long. She comes home and she is, she, she's got this one, one smile that somebody said it is Kampala Cairo smile. I mean, that's how long it was. And, and you know, when Janet smiles, she can really smile. You know, I said, what's, what's the matter? I mean, she said, guess what? I said, I can't guess.
He told me, my boss. I said, your boss? He said, yeah, my boss. He was transferred. <laughs> Don't waste your time with the boss. Boss, when you are in a gun, you are not going to do your work. You are only aggravating the things. Don't ad- he is your boss. Don't address with don't address your boss with disrespect. He's your boss. Mwambie Mungu. Nawaacha kutafuta. Ati do you know the PS? PS yafanya nini? Alafu mkutana ulienda kunishtaki kwa PS utaona. Unaharibu. <laughs> Go to God. And nobody will know who reported who. Because if a letter comes and you are supposed to report in Embu tomorrow morning, or you are supposed to report in Voi, I didn't choose where you are supposed to report. My boss, even me, I can get a letter to report somewhere else, right? But you know the secret. I don't know what it is in your life. I don't know which Haman you have in your life. I'm only urging us, AIC Milimani, if there is a Haman in your life, choose a day. We, we are working on it. By the beginning of the month of April, you are going to choose which fast you're going to deal with. Three days, 21 days, it could be seven days, you will choose. And I can tell you, Haman he will hang kwa vinyongi vyake. Alikutengezea? Yeye ndiyo atahang kwa hizo vinyongi. Tell your neighbor, Haman will hang. I hope the guy you are telling that is not the Haman himself. <laughs> <laughs> Esther did a simple job three days of fast. Don't elongate the battle. Because you see, what you do is you elongate the battle, you spend money. I have had there as private investigators. And then the, the guy goes and leaves the car, uh, he goes the other side, takes a taxi. Hello? Enda kwa bwana wa? Wa mabwana. Am I talking to somebody who is listening to me? If there is a Haman in your life, I don't know who he is or what nature of that Haman. Omba, omba, utafute uso wa bwana. Aona ye kwa siri, atakujibu Father, we pray that as members of this congregation, men and women who are facing a new year, is a year of election. We are not even sure of our governors and MCAs and representatives and senators and all those that are lined up up to the top. But Lord, we are saying that in this country, we want no Hamans. We want no Hamans in our lives, nor in this country. But we can't shout at them. We cannot scheme for them. Or we can come to you. Help us, Lord, first to look inwardly. Those things that we must fast for in our own lives, in our own families. And in our own churches, and in our own counties, and in our own country. Lord, we pray, make it real. Make it real. Change our lives. Bring this phenomenal breakthrough that was experienced by the people of old when they fasted and prayed as we remain in that mood of prayer maybe maybe you're here today and you know you're saying lord 
I desire that something in my life would receive this revolutionary act of God. I don't know what it is. It could be a person, it could be a situation. And if you're here today and you're saying, Lord, help me to do what Esther did. If you're here in this house, that's your prayer. Just to indicate so that, so that we will just pray with you. And I'll be asking Pastor Luke to come and uh, pray. Just put your hand up and just uh, put it down. Just an indication, Lord, there's something. I, I, want, I want my life this year and in the days to come to experience Maybe you're dealing with anger. Maybe you're, you're, you're dealing with pride. Maybe you're dealing with thievery. Taking things that don't belong to you. Maybe you're in the wrong relationship. Or maybe you have this extra marital relationship. You're running around with someone's wife. Or running around with someone's daughter. And you're saying, Lord Jesus, help me out of this quagmire. God will do it. Pastor. Indeed, Lord, you've seen our hands up to you. And in our hearts, you're saying that there is this one thing that has put us down, one thing that has brought us headache, one thing that has provoked distress. Just like in the time of Esther and Mordecai, this one decree that will not allow them to sleep, this one decree that just left them in the masses of the hands of those who will kill them. But sure, we've seen that it doesn't matter the decree, it matters our God, whom we call Abba Father. When we come to you through prayer and fasting, you change those decrees. And so, Father, you've seen these hands that are raised before you right now. I just want to pray, Father Lord, that you may change the negative decrees that have been made for any of us. You may change the stories that have been so negative in our lives things that have not glorified you, sins that were so easily entangling us, Father Lord, we pray that you may give us breakthrough and help us, O oh God, to have this heart of prayer so that you can always trust in you for our lives. The devil puts a lot of barriers in our hearts, the barriers of being busy, the barriers of other priorities, the barriers of commitments of all sorts, the barriers of search for money, power, and wealth. But Lord, can you slow us down so that you can also think of seeking your face in prayer and fasting so that you may bring breakthrough in our lives, in our families, in our place of work, in our church, in our state. So guide us through and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give God a hearty clap for that great reminder today?